the heart. Blood is the fluid that transports nutrients like oxygen and glucose to all cells and wastes like carbon dioxide and urea away from cells. It also transports hormones, the communicators, from their tissues of origin to their target tissues and it transports specialized blood cells that target foreign microbes and neutralize toxins. Blood is important but it has to move in order to do its job. The job of the heart is to push the blood through the blood vessels so that it can contact every cell. In this image we see an ultrasound of a heart. The image is actually inverted so what you see at the bottom are the two upper chambers, the atria, and down below we see the two ventricles. In between we can see the valves opening and closing as blood travels through the heart. Here we have an external view of the heart. Looking at the external heart anatomy we can see that one of the most prominent features is the blood vessels. Blood returns to the right side of the heart via the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava. It's deoxygenated blood and as it enters the right side of the heart it is immediately pumped out to the lungs to drop off carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen. It leaves the heart via the pulmonary artery which branches into pulmonary arteries, one going to each lung. The blood is oxygenated there and it returns to the heart, but this time to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary veins from each of the lungs. And then it travels through the heart and up into the aorta, which is the largest artery in the body, and it branches many, many times and its job is to deliver oxygenated blood to the body. Another feature that you'll notice on the external heart anatomy is that there are actually blood vessels running through the heart muscle itself. These are coronary arteries and they deliver oxygen to the heart muscle. Okay, let's take a look at the inside of the heart now. Starting with the right side of the heart, you'll notice that the heart is actually divided into two sections, the right side and the left side. And you might be saying, well, that's not my right and my left. This is as though you are looking inside somebody's chest cavity. Suppose you're a doctor and you've done some open heart surgery. This is how you would see it. It's the right side of your patient and the left side of your patient. There are four chambers in the heart. The right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. The right and the left side of the heart are separated from each other by a septum and this serves to make the heart in effect a double pump as the right side deals only with deoxygenated blood seen in blue here and the left side of the heart deals only with oxygenated blood shown in red. There should be no mixing of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Blood enters the right side of the heart from all parts of the body via the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. It leaves the left side of the heart via the pulmonary arteries, it goes straight to the lungs where it picks up oxygen and then it returns back to the heart via the pulmonary veins and you can see that those are shown in red now because the blood they carry is oxygenated. Now a general rule of thumb throughout the whole body is that arteries carry oxygenated blood and veins carry deoxygenated blood. We see here one example, really the only example of the exception to that rule where the pulmonary arteries are carrying deoxygenated blood and the pulmonary veins are carrying oxygenated blood. Okay so the blood returns to the left side of the heart oxygenated it enters to the right atrium and then into the right ventricle and it moves out of the heart and into the aorta and this major blood vessel then branches many times and the oxygenated blood is delivered to tissues all over the body. You can see that there are several branches off of the aorta and those branches actually all lead to upper regions of the body and you can see that it sort of wraps around behind the heart and it comes out right down here and this blood is headed for lower regions of the body. Now there's another feature of the inside of the heart that we haven't discussed and these are the valves. There are two different sets of valves. There's one set of valves that separates the atria from the ventricles and there's another set of valves that separates the ventricles from the arteries that lead blood away from the heart. So we have in the right side of the heart 
the atrioventricular valve, which is the only tricuspid or three-part valve. And we have the atrioventricular mitral valve, which is actually made up of two flaps. And these flaps are passive, thin, but strong membranous tissue. And their main job is to prevent backflow of blood back into the atria when the ventricles contract. So the atrioventricular valves are anchored to the heart muscle itself by chordae tendinae, and this is what prevents them from flapping back into the atria when there's a lot of pressure buildup. Uh, you can think of them almost as tethers, and I like to think of them as the ropes on a, a parachute where the parachute inflates, but it's kept from flapping around in the wind too much by these cords that kind of keep it in, in order. The other set of valves are the semilunar valves, and the semilunar valves got their name from the moon. Apparently they look like a half moon to some people. They are made up of two flaps, and they aren't anchored by chordae tendinae. They're sort of embedded in the muscle a little bit more, and they prevent blood from flowing back from the pulmonary artery and the aorta into the ventricles. Okay, so that's a summary of the external and internal features of the heart.